Well, if you follow the Ellen Show on Instagram, then you already know that actress Nazani Noor took over Ellen's account this Saturday for the Global Day of Action for Iran. It was a very powerful day, 25,000 people there, also gatherings happening here in San Diego. Nazani here from Los Angeles now, and thank you for uh, coming in. No, is that any good to see you. All right, Saturday's event, it was pretty big yeah. uh, and powerful in Los Angeles. I know San Diego is among 150 cities all around the world. This was a global day of action for Iran. Yeah, it was huge. Uh, Toronto saw a crowd of 50,000 plus, um, and it was a great effort by Hamid Esmalion, who lost his wife and daughter in the uh, Flight 752 crash, 752 crash. Um, and he is responsible for 151 countries participating in this Global Day of Action. There has been quite a bit of frustration from the Iranians and Iranian-American community about the lack of media coverage mm -hmm. uh, that especially happened over the weekend. There were reports yesterday about an attack on a university, which is equivalent to like a Harvard or a Boston University here yep. in the U.S., students being attacked and uh, shot at. Yeah. Uh, Ellen DeGeneres mm -hmm. gave her Instagram account to you? Yeah, it was crazy. It was a few days ago. Um, I got a DM through Instagram from their digital marketing, marketing team, and they said, we would like to speak with you about a collaboration. So we had a Zoom meeting, and they said, you know, she's done this before during the Black Lives Matter protests of 2020, where she gave Patrice Cullors a 24-hour takeover, and we would like for you to do the same thing to highlight the Iran protests. And they said that Ellen was following the stories and was very outraged herself and wanted to shine a light on the situation. So over the weekend, on Saturday there was a protest. I was at that protest yeah. uh, as well, covering it. You were posting stories and, and showing people. I know we have some video on Ellen's account mm -hmm. about what was happening. Yeah, so I posted stories from the LA protest. I gave a little bit of background information to people so they could understand what was going on in Iran and why people were protesting. Um, it started with the death of Masa Amini, which you know started as a feminist movement but quickly turned into anti-government sentiment. So I was trying to capture all of that too for the audience in a really succinct way. And and. I mean, the protest was really intense. You were there too, but it's so beautiful to see so many people coming together from around the world to unite for this cause, for a free Iran, um, and for fighting for basic human rights, fighting for women's rights, for bodily autonomy. You know, the Iranian people have been living under this oppressive regime for 43 years now. So this is what's at the, this is the framework for these protests. This has happened over many years and it has not gotten media coverage the way that it has now. It's starting to get some. We need way more. I mean, none of the major news networks have talked about what happened over the weekend. We have tens of thousands of people coming out in various cities and nobody seems to be covering it. So thank you for covering it. Um, I hope that we see more for more networks. You're an actress, but mm -hmm. you've been very vocal over the past uh, few weeks, like day 15, 16 now, about what's happening. Why? Well, first of all, I'm Iranian, so it's in my blood. It doesn't matter that I didn't, you know, I wasn't born there, I didn't grow up there. I am Iranian through and through, and that's the culture that I was raised with. My family and friends are there, like all of us. I have a strong connection to my roots. And to see the people of our motherland going through what they're going through and just literally fighting for basic human rights, I, I, there's no way that you can't speak up. There's no way. What do you want to see happen uh, with the community uh, right now? Again, these reports yesterday were very troubling yesterday about what was happening to the students that were being attacked and shot and, and killed there. And all of this is on social media where people are watching this happen right before their eyes. At Sharif University, yes, which is, like you said, it's Tehran's MIT, Harvard. We have the brightest students there. I feel like if you're going to be attacking the best and brightest students in the country, it really shows the cracks that are happening within the government of the Islamic Republic, um, which is a positive sign. I would love to see the Iranian community continue to unite. I, I think it's wonderful that there are people, Americans, non-Iranians, that have been using their really big platform, actresses, artists, people using their uh, time on concert stages to keep amplifying the voices of the Iranian people. We're at a pivotal moment. A lot of time, get a lot of people get fatigued and they stop caring, they stop sharing, and what we need is to keep this movement going. So I would like to see more media coverage, more accurate media coverage. There was a New York Times article that came out yesterday, unfortunately, that didn't focus on Sharif University, didn't talk about women's rights abuses, human rights abuses, the oppressive regime. The people are in the streets yelling, death to the government, death to the dictator, and this New York Times article said it was about the economy, and it's not accurate. So we need accurate media reporting. Well, Nazare Noor, we appreciate you taking your time coming down from Los Angeles to Thank talk you. about this. Thank you. Thank you. All right, 722 now coming up. Why train service between San Diego and L.A. shut down and when it could restart. Plus, how crews saved a moose stuck in an irrigation canal.